Well, hello and welcome to the show. Glad you've joined us this week. I'm really excited about what we're gonna do. I've got Justin Hatfield here with me. Justin's ridden for me for years. You've seen him on TV before. Uh, we're gonna give Justin a lesson working on this horse. Justin, thanks for being willing to be here today. It's a pleasure to be here. I'm looking forward to it. We're gonna work on some finishing techniques for Justin on uh, the turnaround and maybe work on the stop a little bit. That's all coming up right here on Discovering the Horseman Within. Discovering the Horseman Within with Ken McNabb, presented by Weaver Leather. There's always been an undying loyalty between horse and horseman. It's a partnership built one day at a time through pure and honest dealing. Whether you ride for work, trail, or competition, Weaver Leather manufactures quality products built from only top-grade materials and always backed by our 100% satisfaction guarantee. Because your tack is the only thing that comes between you and your horse. Ride the brand with Weaver Leather. Don't miss your chance to ride with Ken McNabb in 2015. Ken brings his years of experience to both people and horses in clinics and events from coast to coast. Join Ken as he creates a unique environment where each horse is trained using gentle methods and the rider is coached to become their personal best. Call our office or visit KenMcNabb.com to reserve your space now. And be sure to join Ken on Facebook for updates, tips, and more. Discover the horseman within you with Ken McNabb. So Justin, you've been riding Valentine all summer. And um, mostly, what have you done with him? Oh, I've been using him on the ranch, gathering cows. Um, we've started roping on him a little bit. Uh, just basically outside using on the ranch, just everything that you need to do in the summer. Okay, so kind of time to start putting some of that polish on. Yes. That's gonna make him look good in our sale next year. Yeah, fall's coming and, and we need to put some shine there. Okay, so I wanna start with the turnaround. Everybody knows that there's, there's no more useless exercise in the world than a 360 spin. There's never a reason to go in 360 circles except for the fun of doing it. Yes. Uh, but it just, it does help establish a handle and a one-handed handle on our horse. So I wanna start there. So I'm gonna back up a little bit. And what I want you to do is just show me kind of the as good a turn on the hindquarters as he's got right now and then we're just going to add some exercises and see what we can come up with okay sounds Kinda good like painting the house we're just going to start on it okay go ahead and show me the other side for the fun of it got a, a little bit better 180 on that side come back to the left again so you've you've got what you've kind of got is two 180s, okay? Yeah. So your, your horse makes a 180 and he kind of walks forward and he makes another 180. Okay. And there's a little bit of resistance in his bridle. Yeah. Um, a little bit of pushing his nose and pushing his shoulders out. And so my, my theory uh, has always been, if I get my horse's shoulders right, then the hindquarters are gonna take care of themselves. Okay. okay? So he's, he's crossing over, but he's not actually walking a 360. Okay. He's, he's just kind of, uh, like I said, he, he's kind of making a forward 180. So what I've got to teach him to do is stay in place and make that 360. Okay. 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 Without losing momentum. So I'm going to start um, with really loose reins and I'm going to ask the horse to turn. Well, of course he's not going to turn. He's going to walk forward. Yes. Your hands are going to check his forward mo momentum and your leg and your seat is gonna send him again the direction that you've asked him to go, okay? okay. So you're gonna, basically you're gonna redirect his forward movement. It's gonna look a little bit like this. I'm gonna ask him to turn left and right there he just keeps going. So just pick up on his face and bring it back. Release him, I wanna pick up on his face and bring it back. Pick up on his face and bring it back. Pick up on his face and bring it back pick up on his face and bring him back. Now you want to be careful that you don't end up backing him up. 
Okay. If you back this horse up, what you're going to do is scatter his hind end all over the place. Okay. Yeah. So instead, I'm going to ask him to make that turn. When he starts to walk forward, I just bump him back. Right there, bump him back. Right there. Bump him back. And if I get two or three steps where he's kind of clean, yeah. I'm going to let him go. And I'll walk him back over here. Set my leg in position one, ask that front end to come around right there, bump him back. And you notice I keep his nose looking where it's going and bump with the outside rein. Okay. Inside rein is direction, outside rein is leg speed. Okay? Okay. So this horse has done that a little bit. He's got a long ways to go before he's there too, but he's a little cleaner than your horse. So it's gonna take you you know, a little bit more to get that done, but go ahead and give that a shot. Okay. Okay, so more of your outside rein and less of your inside rein, more of your supporting or neck rein. Okay. Stop the forward motion. Stop the forward motion with the outside rein. And give it back to him. Yep. And then there you go. let him walk out. Yep, that okay. was a lot cleaner and a lot prettier. You're gonna make a huge difference in a few minutes thinking this way. Okay. Really keep your inside shoulder up. Keep you, my you shoulder don't wanna up. Lean. Yeah, you want to make sure you're not dragging your body into this turn. Okay. Outside shoulder of that horse, check it with that rein. You okay. Get that motion. I would say, yep, you're getting there. I would say you're getting your hand out here more than I like. Okay. I want to, I want to be as close to the horse's body as I can because I want to end up finished. So I want to bring my hands here Okay. as much as I can. If I have to shorten my rein, I will. Leave him alone right there, check that rein. Okay. Keep your hand in a little closer to your saddle horn. Okay. What I find myself doing is I bring that hand out there to try to compensate for him. Right. Instead of me making him do the work, I'm trying to babysit him through it. Exactly, and when we come to finish, we have to quit babysitting. There you go. That was a lot better. And you, you really want to use your outside rein a lot more. Okay. Okay. Your outside rein is critical in creating that balance. Um, so go ahead, and, go ahead and just stop for just a second. Okay. When we overbend our horse, you automatically kick his butt over. Okay. Yes. Okay. So in the, in the pivot or spin, you're trying to keep that horse's hind leg up underneath of him. Yeah. So you really want to reduce the amount of bend. Like I want to see maybe the back 10 to 15% of the eye. Okay. A lot of times when I start into this exercise, I can just barely see the shine of the eyeball, just barely. Okay. I don't want him bent any more than that, and I want to use my leg to move his body and move that balance that direction, okay? Okay. Now, one of the things that happens when you use your leg is if you're not careful, you start pushing his rib cage over. Okay. So I use my inside leg and tell him, keep that rib cage arced. That rib cage has to stay arced, now just follow it. Okay. And that's why your hands are so important, because you've got to keep his nose going that way, but check the, check the forward movement without backing up. Okay, okay. Way better, way better. Go ahead and stop him right there. Yeah, let him walk out of it. Perfect. Okay. Okay, so Justin, that direction, that was really a big improvement. 
At this point, I still let them walk out of the turn a little bit. Okay. We're gonna probably by the end of this lesson, we're gonna be done doing that. But I still let them walk out of it a little bit because it helps keep the momentum alive. Okay. Okay. So uh, let's let's just go one time and work the other direction. Okay. Okay, there's some improvement there. Not a ton, but some. So let's just give him just a rest on that for just a second. Don't miss your chance to ride with Ken McNabb. Ken brings his years of experience to both people and horses in clinics and events from coast to coast. Call our office or visit KenMcNabb.com to reserve your space now. And be sure to join Ken on Facebook for updates, tips, and more. Discover the horseman within you with Ken McNabb. So this is one of my favorite things in what I do. I've known Justin since he was pretty much a kid. And while you guys were on commercial break, he went and got his baby and did a little babysitting. So he's got his daughter Tenley here and we're gonna deposit her back with her mom. But I thought, you know what? I wanted you guys to get a chance to meet her and she gets to be on television at eight months old. I think that's pretty cool. And I think it's really cool that Justin involves his wife and his daughter in everything he does. I think that's an amazing trait that I hope all of you do with your horses at home. All right, you better get Tenley out of here. We gotta get back to work. Sounds good. I could get distracted by children and stay there a long time. So Justin, what I noticed in that first exercise is that your horse is just a little bit sticky in his shoulders. Yes. And he, he wants to let his hind end come loose. Yep. Uh, and so what I want to do is I want to free those shoulders up. Okay. So we're going to go back and we're going to work on a reverse arc figure eight. Okay. okay? So I'm going to ride my horse just into a nice circle. Have his nose nice and soft in my hands, bent to the right. I'm going to take my right leg and push his shoulders to the left. I make a circle to the left. Then I'm going to let him come back to the right and release him. Okay. I'm going to take him around here, bend him to the left, and take his shoulders to the right. He's moving his shoulders nicely to the right. Then I'm going to come back over here to the left. Okay. I just want to keep those circles kind of about 8, 10 feet, about the same size we were working. Okay. But I really want to move in those shoulders off of your legs. And, you know, you need to ask him with your legs. And if he, does, if he says no, then you need to tell him with your legs, move over. Okay. Right? Okay. So you want to start off with that pressure with your leg as light as possible. And then what I'm telling Justin is you need to go ahead and add more pressure. You want to reach forward up there to position one and move those shoulders. And like you're looking for one or two good steps. If you get one or two good steps, his nose soft and he's moving over nice, then bring it back. Now keep your hands square. Your hands are going from here to here. Okay. Ride him right here in the middle. This is an exercise off your seat and legs. Your hands are only dictating which direction he's going and how fast he's going there. There you go. Okay, now ride him out of there. Relax your hands a little bit. You're trying too hard with your hands. Okay. There you go. Let him, he wants to bring that nose down. And I keep finding your outside hand back out over here. I want it to stay up by the saddle horn. Move those shoulders, there you go. And then you get a good step or two, come back to following his nose. Good, you wanna really take a moment to shift your leg 
So your, your inside leg that's moving the shoulders away needs to come off and your outside leg needs to come on. Okay. When I talk inside outside, I'm talking inside the bend, right? So when Justin has this horse reverse arcing, the horse is bent to the left, moving his shoulders to the right, then his left leg is the inside leg, even though the horse is moving the other direction. It's inside the arc of the horse. There you go, right out of there, good. Just make that transition a little slower with your legs. Just you're moving the shoulders over. Relax. Move his nose back. Move his shoulders back to his nose. Moving his shoulders over. That's looking good. Yep. Now just come right back to his nose. Relax that leg. Good. Just walk forward. Hey, we're getting those shoulders a little bit cleaner, a little bit better. Okay. And just really slow your hands and uh, your hands down. He wants to really be soft, but you're starting to kind of like, hey, come on now, come over here. You want to do that more with your legs and your hands. Okay. There you go. There you go. I could walk into almost any arena in the world and I could just close my eyes, have the arena full of people, and if I said slow your hands down and use your legs more, I would be giving good advice to every single rider. We almost all revert to using our hands to accomplish a goal and we really need to use our seat and legs to communicate with the horse. I use my seat and legs to communicate with the horse all the time. In fact, I believe that the more you pull on the horse's face, the more you actually break down the line of communication. I'm not saying that you don't hold on his face. I certainly, I do, I frame him up and I ride him there. But then I start thinking about what I want to move in the horse's body. And as I think about that, my body starts sending cues to that horse without me even trying. I just start sitting in a different position to do something different and my horse starts responding. So the more I pull on the horse's face, the more he thinks about the bit. That's all he can think about is the bit. That's what's happening. You think about how sensitive the inside of your mouth is. How much do you want the dentist to ding around inside your mouth? You really don't. So the more you pull on the inside of this horse's mouth, the less he's thinking about what you're wanting to do, and the more he's thinking about what's really going on. And so I really believe that. Slow your hands down, speed your legs up. Okay. Use your legs, you know, you don't necessarily need to speed them up, but use your legs more. All right, now let's go back to that same exercise we were doing. Okay. okay. And the shoulders are moving a little bit better. Let's go back to that. Your inside rein is going to set the direction. Your outside rein checks him from going forward, right? Uh, yeah. You start him into a pivot, and your inside rein sets the direction, your outside leg checks the forward movement. Keep him going where you're going. Use, there you go. Move those shoulders just like you were in the reverse arc circle. There you go. Good. Ride him out of it. Come back. Do it again. Hit those shoulders are still sticky. There's yes. no doubt about it. So these two exercises, Justin, are what you're going to be working on. For sure. And honestly, if you work these two exercises, 25, 30 minutes a day, you know, even two or three times a week, in no time at all, this horse is gonna have a pivot foot stuck in the ground and fluidly be turning around it. There you go, you feel that pop, kinda? Yes. He's not stepping far enough forward. Okay. So you need to relax your rein a little bit and let him, he's running into himself, you need okay. to let him step forward more. I'm trying to trap too much forward momentum. Yes, you're, there you go, that was way better. You, you gotta let him have a little more forward momentum. Okay, I see. Oh. The horse, the, the pivot has to be a forward movement. You just have to keep it from going anywhere. Gotcha. You just keep releasing him into it. There you go. You feel that when he really steps through, you feel it where he kind of swings underneath yeah. of you. That's when you're getting two or three steps correctly. Up till then, he's backing up or stepping on himself or not really looking pretty at all. But all of a sudden, you get two or three steps 
All of that's pretty rough. There you go. Give me one more pretty one. There, right there. Okay, go ahead and bring him over here. Okay. So right now we're getting we're getting a lot more of a pivot than we started with. Yeah. When we started, we you know just kind of both ends flopping around the middle. Yeah. But now what we've got is a, a pretty decent pivot, but the front end is kind of stepping on himself, so you need a little more forward. Okay. Don't hold him back quite so much. Trust him a little more to take care of himself. Absolutely. Okay, gotcha. Don't miss your chance to ride with Ken McNabb in 2015. Ken brings his years of experience to both people and horses in clinics and events from coast to coast. Join Ken as he creates a unique environment where each horse is trained using gentle methods and the rider is coached to become their personal best. Call our office or visit KenMcNabb.com to reserve your space now. And be sure to join Ken on Facebook for updates, tips, and more. Discover the horseman within you with Ken McNabb. I'm looking forward to seeing you at my upcoming ranch or sale. Remember, it's the first Saturday in June. You can contact me, my office, 307-645-3149, or the Diamond McNabb Ranch or Sale Office at 307-298-5030. There's always been an undying loyalty between horse and horseman. It's a partnership built one day at a time through pure and honest dealing. Whether you ride for work, trail, or competition, Weaver Leather manufactures quality products built from only top-grade materials and always backed by our 100% satisfaction guarantee. Because your tack is the only thing that comes between you and your horse. Ride the brand with Weaver Leather. Discovering the Horseman Within with Ken McNabb has been brought to you by Weaver Leather. Accountability is one of those godly character traits that fits into horsemanship like a glove. R really, what is accountability? Accountability is being aware of my actions and being willing to take responsibility for the results of my actions. If I don't hold myself accountable, there's no way I can hold my horse accountable. And if I don't hold my horse accountable, he's not safe to ride. How do you hold your horse accountable? Well, let's, let's make some simple examples. If I ask my horse to stop, he has to stop. Whoa isn't a suggestion, it's a command. So if he doesn't stop, then I have to hold him accountable for missing the cue and I pick up on him, increase the pressure, cause him to work harder and say, hey, you missed the cue, you should have stopped. It's the same in our own life. There's lots of times when we should have stopped, when we shouldn't have proceeded with whatever it is we did, but we did, and now we're accountable for those actions. If I lose my temper with my horse, right, and I apply way more pressure way too suddenly, what's going to happen is that horse is going to get nervous, he's going to get hot, and I'm going to have to deal with the results of my temper. So in the end, I'm going to be held accountable for my actions by my horse. I think God expects us to hold ourselves accountable. He certainly tells us He will hold us accountable. He tells us actually in scripture that we will someday account for every idle word spoken. So I try to think about that in my life every day. I try to ask myself, do I want to be held accountable for what I'm about to do? Or do I want to be held accountable for what I'm about to say? If I hear this recorded back to me, recorded and played back to me, am I going to cringe or am I going to be okay with it? Several years ago, I came up with the concept of no regrets horsemanship. Actually, it was in 2008, prior to my trip to Road to the Horse. My, my thought was, I don't want to do anything with my horse that I'm going to regret later. And I, I try to look at that in my whole life. I look at my whole life and say, I, I don't want to do something here that I'm going to have to be held accountable for. I don't want to do something in my actions that's going to disappoint you and you're going to come up and say, hey, what did this mean? And I encourage people to try to live that way. Certainly we make mistakes, certainly we have regrets. But if we ask ourselves before every action, is this something that I'm going to regret? Is this something that I'm going to be proud of? Then being held accountable for our good actions isn't an issue. It's only being held accountable for the stuff we regret. If we live our life in such a way that we try to have no regrets, then we know we're living our life in such a way that it's actually going to bring glory and honor to God. Justin, that makes sense to you? It sure does. I, I appreciate your time and 
uh, showing that to me through what way it locks it into my brain so I don't keep babysitting my horses too much. Perfect, that's the, that's the important part of bringing a horse to finish, you gotta turn him loose. You gotta let him go and let him do it on his own, that's the idea. We hope you've enjoyed this, we hope it's been educational for you. Thank you so much for joining us and until next time, may God bless the trails you ride. Find out more about Ken McNabb Horsemanship at KenMcNabb.com. Yeah.